free speech, which is why we wanted to talk about the fact that dozens of Anglican priests and church leaders have actually called for a free and open debate of, an, of the issue. Today, in a letter to Sydney Archbishop Glenn Davies, the signatories say, and there's, there's several dozen of the signatories, say they're concerned the church is silencing advocates of same-sex marriage within their ranks, a move at odds with the church's call for respectful, genuine debate. Archbishop Davies recently refused to renew the preaching licence of Sydney priest Keith Mascourt, who was on the drum last week, and that was about his vocal support for marriage equality. One of the signatories of the letter, church historian and member of the General Synod, Dr Muriel Porter, joins us from Melbourne now. Welcome to the drum. Hello. Dr Porter, why did you sign this petition? I was very proud to sign the petition because I was very delighted that so many of my colleagues are at last prepared to speak up and say we can't be silenced forever. Those of us who are devout, Bible-believing Christians who accept that same-sex marriage, same-sex relationships are not going against the gospel. We need to be saying this and saying it loudly and calling for there to be the genuine freedom of conversation about these views from the gospel that have been effectively silenced now for the best part of a decade and more. But the position of the Sydney Archbishop Glenn Davies is that, you know, Keith Mascord is free to speak all he likes, but in terms of a, a license as an Anglican priest, there are certain stipulations. So he doesn't think that he's demonstrated a, 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 a view of the Bible that's consistent with his ordination vows. Well, that's the Archbishop's view, and I'm sad to say it's probably the view of most of the leaders in Sydney Diocese. But not so long before that, the primate of the Australian Church, the Archbishop of Melbourne, Philip Freer, actually, in support of a plebiscite, called for there to be a genuine conversation where people's conscience on both sides was able to be freely aired. He made no restrictions on clergy or laity or anyone. That's certainly not the case in other parts of the Australian Church. So it's very sad to see this and in my view, it's, it's yet another bullying tactic to try and silence those Christians, not just in Sydney, but throughout Australia, who really want to say the gospel is not against loving, monogamous, same-sex relationships. Do you, think that, that, do you think that there are people who are frightened to speak, that there would be repercussions for them speaking on this? I mean, how significant do you think that is? <laughs> Well, it's, there have been fears of repercussions, but also a sort of a silence, a collective silence, if you like, because there have been so many threats, both locally and also internationally, from conservative Anglicans, that if there is any attempt to support same-sex marriage, the ordination of people in open same-sex committed relationships, that they will split from the church. They will split the church, and there have been splintered churches, splinter groups formed. That threat is taken very seriously by well-meaning people who have different views and who've been frightened to exacerbate that split in the church. I'm not one of them. I'm more prepared to stand up and speak because I heard the same threats made over the ordination of women. Mm -hmm. We have women yeah. priests and bishops now and the sky has not fallen mm -hmm. in. And the line yes. in those two, two debates is really the, the attempts to reconcile modern society with traditional doctrine, isn't it? And That's of certainly course one it, part of it. Of course it's going to be challenging to institutions such as churches. Um, I, I'm not a theologian, but mm. I know about member-based organisations and the biggest challenge member-based organisations have is to, to remain relevant in a changing world. So your concern would be by closing the door on new ideas, you're actually shrinking your, shrinking mm. your institution. It, 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 well, it'd be a shame if the Anglicans were to join some of the political parties in that view that disunity is death type argument. Mm. I mean, I think one of the joys of the Liberal Party is that we can have debates between the more conservative and the more progressive side. I thought it was also one of the strengths of the Anglican Church, unlike, for example, the Catholic Church or the Islamic 
or religion which would not tolerate that sort well, of free Sue, speech. Well, let me so. say, let me say there that certainly is the tradition historically mm. yes. in Anglicanism. But when you have very strong conservative forces who are determined to have their own way at all costs, mm. and for many of these conservative forces, the whole issue of homosexuality has become a line in the sand. It's a power base, a power yep. claim. Yep. And so when you talk about wanting to be relevant to society, the answer very quickly is, and I've even seen it in the Archbishop of Sydney's address to his synod just two nights ago, will be countercultural. And yes. that is held up as a great banner of honour that we're not part of the society. So talk about being relevant to society yep. can become yes. another flag that we don't want to be part of. No, yes. I just want to bring shame it's, it's, yes. it's an amazing thing. Two points I'll just make. One but the first of them is that we seem to have, some people seem to have, the view that culture never changes, that tradition mm. never changes, and that's just absolute well, marriage hasn't rubbish. Marriage has changed since 2004. It's, so <laughs> it, it, it is just right. All societies, all cultures change. When I was and born, so has the church. So has I, the I church. I don't disagree. In many parts of the church, it has. When I was born, I wasn't counted. I wasn't considered human enough to be counted in the census. But times have changed. I'm the deputy vice chancellor of Australia's oldest university. Mm. Things change, and the world doesn't end. That's the first point. So I don't think the church should be terrified by the notion of change. Second point, very quickly, is I would be incredibly frustrated if I was an Austra as an Australian voter that our politicians sort of go, well, same-sex marriage is a one opportunity, one 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 hit type thing. If you don't do it now, it's never. They're employed to find the solution. Ah, oh, finding solutions. We'll do it on the drum at any case. Thanks so much, Muriel Porter, for joining us tonight. Thank and to you. Sue Boyce, Shane Houston, Peter Lewis.